Hello there, my fellow green-skinned friends, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer Humor. Today's episode is gonna be a bit different, in that it's not technically made as a joke. The topic is actually a non-canon faction of orcs, which, while not outright funny, their very gimmick makes them quite entertaining in my opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the orcs of the Orcperium and they are here to emulate the Imperium in some very strange and funny ways. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Orcperium, or as they call themselves the Imperium, has a unique culture, revolving around the belief that the aesthetic qualities and beliefs of the Imperium of Man bestow some kind of power. This in turn manifests as a soft emulation of imperial organization and culture which permeates throughout the clan. This causes the orcs of the Orcperium to be almost universally reviled and distrusted by other orcs. Even the blood axes, believed to be their progenitors, regard the Orcperium as bizarre, unorky, fanatical and embarrassing. It is not clear when the clan split off from the Blood Axes, but archaeological evidence suggests that the clan has been repurposing Astartes' armor ever since the early Great Crusade. The orcs are known to be in possession of pieces of every single type of power armor used by the Imperium since M30, including Mark I and Custodes armor. During the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy, the Orcperium was infamous for salvaging battlefields in the immediate aftermath of a conflict, and taking all Imperial tech which had yet to be recovered by servitors. This was tolerated by the Imperium during the Horus Heresy, but it did lead to many skirmishes with the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Adeptus Mechanicus, as a result of the clan's unique cultural practices, have been involved in more violent conflicts with the Orcperium than any other Imperial organization. The clan has also participated in several Wars. They were involved in the Wow of the Beast, Garagak and Gaskul, including the Second and Third Wars for Armageddon. Much more recently, in M42, the Orcperium became gradually less and less friendly with the Imperial forces. Particularly, Orcperium forces led by the Prime Orc Growlamin would engage in direct hostilities with any Imperial forces believed to be undertaking action in support of Robot Gilliman's Indomitus Crusade. These Orcs take extreme pride in their stolen or copied Imperial armor and regalia. They frequently paint and repaint over their armor, virtually always painting a reproduction of Adeptus Astartes chapters. It is not fully known why an orc will choose to wear the colors of a certain chapter, but it appears that the orcs have some understanding of the history of each chapter, and may select the one that they believe to be strongest or represents them the best. It is clear that not all of it comes from direct contact, as they have knowledge of battles and events that they were not present for. They frequently fight and debate among each other as to which chapter is the best. Despite this behavior, Orcperium warbands do not separate themselves into chapters, and instead fight as an amalgamated horde. They seem to believe that they are members of the Imperium, and as such are generally non-aggressive and even initially friendly and amicable with Imperial representatives. However, they do not attempt to hide the fact that they are indeed orcs. Individual members of the clan appear to be, on average, more intelligent and well-spoken than the orcs of other tribes. Rather than mindless bloodshed for its own sake, these orcs have shown a capacity for selflessness and a desire to advance to a higher purpose. These orcs, generally, believe themselves to be at least allied to the Imperium most of the time. This can mean that Imperial vessels in void space can safely pass near, or even through, entire fleets of the Orcperium. One Orozino's Inquisitor once spent an entire week in orbit above the world of Menos II without any kind of hostility. Such action, however, is not without risk. The Orcs are dogmatic, short-tempered, and quick to suspect human subversives of heresy 
at which point the ire of every orc in the vicinity will be drawn. But certain Imperial vessels, including those of the Adeptus Astartes Black Templars, Imperial Fists, Marines Malevolent, Flesh Terrors, and Mantis Warriors, seem to automatically draw the clan aggression. While amicable to the presence of the Imperium overall, the clan is very intolerant to the presence of any Chaos incursion. In fact, they will hunt down Chaos with a zeal that will make even a Sororitas blush. Concerning other Xenos, the Orcperium can have a very adversarial relationship. The forces of the clan were engaged in regular combat with several tendrils of the High Fleet Dagon. They have also been recorded deliberately seeking out and attacking Necron Tomb Worlds, often with full invasion armies. Last but not least, they have been known to engage the Eldar Craftworlds Luganath, Alaitok, and Biltan, including several engagements with Dark Eldar and Corsair pirate fleets. They also have knowledge of the Tau and a rather strong personal opinion on them, believing them to be weaklings and cowards. The Orcs of the Orcperium desire to advance to a higher purpose, and this seems to be directly tied to the whims of their leader, a warchief they refer to as the Boss Emperor. This Orc is gigantic, and clad in a large suit of golden armor cobbled together from various sources. This particular Orc should be considered extremely dangerous, even by the standards of a war boss. The orcs of the clan worship the Emperor and can be severely agitated in his presence. They insist that the other orcs ought to follow them, and their initial trust of actual Imperial units becomes strained if the Imperials do not regard the war boss as the true Emperor. Throughout the history of the clan, there have been recorded to be several Emperors, although the orcs do not acknowledge this. The Emperor also has a personal elite guard of mega-armored knobs called the Custodes, with a K. The religious beliefs of the Orcperium center around the Boss Emperor and the worship of him. In Orcperial theology, the Boss Emperor is regarded as not merely a prophet of, but a direct conduit of the will of Gork, or possibly Mork. Unlike other Orc tribes, however, the Orcperium rarely sees sectarian conflict between the followers of Gork and the followers of Morg, because at the end of the day, they all follow the Boss Emperor. The actual religious practices revolve around revering symbols and chanting prayers to the Boss. The clan also has a number of sub-bosses who refer to themselves as Primorgs. They appear to take the name and aesthetic traits similar to the actual Astartes Primarchs of the Great Crusade. Among them are the likes of Graulamin, Sanguinus, Carax, Sneaky the Snake, Jagged Eye, Arn Orcus, Lion L, Orus, and Uclan the Black. Each of these Primarchs commands large groups of boys and are subservient to the Emperor. Just like the Emperor, there have been multiple recorded iterations of each Prime Orc, none of whom are recognized by the clan. When a Prime Orc falls in battle, his second in command will typically don the war gear and continue with the battle as if he had always been that particular Prime Orc. Oftentimes, large invasion forces will involve two or more Prime Orcs converging into one system. Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough information on all of these parody Primarchs, but we do have some words about three of them. Taking after and styling himself after the Ultramarines Primarch Reboot Gilliman, Graulamin heads one of the biggest fleets of the Orcperium. Observers consider him among the most dangerous and combatant of the Primarchs, not only in single combat, but tactically as well. Graulamin will often command his forces to conduct distraction tactics, pincer maneuvers, and set up flanking opportunities with extreme ease and discipline. In approximately 112 M42, during the close of the Blight of Ultramar campaign, Graulamin himself became aware of the reborn Primarch Gilliman for the very first time. Declaring Gilliman to be a traitor and an heretical impostor, he launched his fleet into the single most aggressive action of the Orcperium ever made against the Imperium. 
A close associate and confidant of the Primorch Growlamin, the Primorch Arn Orcus is the most adept mechboy in the Orcperium. Styling himself after the depictions of the late Iron Hands Primarch Ferris Manus, Orcus is known for his extensive collection of heavy weapon platforms. He also oversees the construction and deployment of the Kilakans, Death Dreads, Gorkonauts, Morkonauts, Stompas, and Gargans operated by the Orcperium. Surrounded by cyborg knobs and a veritable army of mechboys, the firepower he can bring to bear belies the relatively small size of his fleet. Proof positive that not even the strange religious beliefs of the Orcperium are immune to the influence of the Cult of Speed, the Primarch Jagedai takes after the White Scar's Primarch Jagedai Khan. Whether it's leading the screaming horde of biker boys on hit and run attacks, or battering the enemy with flanking war buggies and half tracks, you can bet that none of that will ever be done slowly. Jagedai has recently been seen in the Vigila system, which has been under siege by a larger orc invasion. Rather than participate directly alongside the other orcs, Jagedai has taken it upon himself to root out the elements of Vigilis's increasingly prominent Gene Stealer cult. The military forces of the Orcperium overall are vast, as vast as any other major clan. They do seem to have a particular affinity towards the use of jump packs and heavy armor. Some of the orcs have been seen using captured Imperial vehicles with very little to no obvious modification meaning that the mechboys of the clan have knowledge on how to repair Imperial vehicles and on how to properly operate them. At the end of the day, despite their bizarre cultural practices, their actual combat doctrine can differ very little from the average orc. Although they are known to regularly conduct military drills and have attached actual ranks to their chain of command. Some of these ranks include Guardsman for Gretchen, Brother for boys, Sergeant for a boss knob in command of a squad, Captain, Lieutenant, Commander for knobs of various sizes and responsibilities, and of course the Primorchs for war bosses. The clan also prefers looted Imperial vessels for Voidcraft. Many of them are actually broken off space hulks and then repaired and modified. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the very original, interesting, and quite funny Orcperium for today. Almost makes you wish that they were actually canon. Nothing funnier than an orc actually calling an inquisitor a heretic with actual honesty. I would also like to take a moment and say thank you to the subscriber who suggested I actually cover the Orcperium. Turns out it was a very funny and interesting suggestion. What are your thoughts about these Imperial Orcs? Do you think such a faction could actually exist? Do share your thoughts or questions if you have any in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. May Gork, or possibly Mork, watch over you.